welcome to Afternoon Bond Court. Um, we're going to start today with Mr. Amari Smith. from the other day or not, but as I said um, the other day in terms of these cases, the bond setting will happen in, in two phases. The first is the procedural information where we'll advise right. The second part will be when, we, when we'll hear from other people. So we'll start. Uh, Mr. Smith, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are here today before me. charged with the following. One count of attempted murder. Do you understand that charge? Yes, Do you understand that charge carries up a penalty of up to 30 years in prison? Do yes, you understand that? You're also here today charged with unlawful carrying of a pistol. Do you understand that charge? And you understand that that charge carries up to one year in jail or a fine of $1,000. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Smith, I also have nine charges of assault and battery of a high and aggravated nature. Sometimes we call that ad hand. Do you understand that charge as well? And you understand that that charge carries, each of those charges carries up to 20 years in prison. Do you understand that? Do you have any questions for me about the nature of the charges or the penalties associated with them? No, no. Okay. As to this bond hearing, um, Mr. Smith, you do have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say in this bond hearing can be used against you in a future court proceeding. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. You also have the right to an attorney. And if you can't afford an attorney, we can see if you qualify for a court-appointed attorney. Do you understand that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have to read you some things in terms of your rights related to an attorney, okay? So we've talked about the charges. You understand those. You do have a right to represent yourself on these charges and proceed without an attorney, but you have to be aware of the following things. Number one, self-representation can be dangerous. You have the right to have the assistance of a lawyer at all stages of the proceeding, and if you can't afford one, we can appoint one for you. Criminal defense is very specialized and very technical, and there may be certain factual, legal, and other defenses that you may not be aware of. There might be collateral consequences of any conviction or plea that you're also not aware of. Things like restricting your right to possess firearms. If you decide to exercise your right to proceed without an attorney, then you're going to be responsible for complying with all the rules of court. Any judge is going to hold you to the same standard as an attorney. Do you understand that? Yes. You also understand that if you waive your screening for a court-appointed attorney, you're going to be responsible for hiring your own attorney. Do you understand that? Knowing all of that, at this time, do you wish to be appointed or screened for a court-appointed attorney? Do you wish to be screened for a public defender today? You do not. Okay. I am going to give you, at the end of all this, I am going to give you a form to fill out saying that you understand your rights and you've decided to waive your right to a court-appointed attorney. Do you understand that as well? Okay. You also have the right to a preliminary hearing on these charges. Do you understand what a preliminary hearing is? Okay. A preliminary hearing is a hearing in which a judge would decide whether or not there was probable cause for each and every charge that you've been charged with. You have the right to that hearing, but you have to request it within 10 days of your bond setting today. Would you like to request a preliminary hearing today on your charges? Uh, I want to wait on my lawyer first. Okay, I understand that if you wait on your lawyer, you might wait that right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're also going to give you some paperwork to sign saying that you've been informed of your right to a preliminary hearing, okay? Yes, ma'am. The last right that I want to go over with you is your right to be present at your trial and to make sure that you understand if you were to fail to appear, trial could resume without you. Do you understand that right as well? Yes, ma'am. All right. We're now going to move to the portion of today's hearing in which we um, discuss the 
setting of the actual bonds. I'll be glad to hear from the solicitor today. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. The facts of this case demonstrate an extreme danger to our community and cannot be tolerated. On behalf of the Lexington County Solicitor's Office, law enforcement, and our community, we ask that bond be denied. On April 16th, just before 2 p.m., responding officers with Columbia Police Department and numerous other law enforcement agencies across the Midlands responded to emergency calls regarding an active shooter event and mass casualties at Columbia Mall, Columbiana Mall. This shootout occurred within the jurisdiction of Lexington County. Responding officers arrived at the scene to find multiple persons injured and three suspects identified over the course of the investigation that evening. This was a Saturday <coughs> afternoon at the mall. It was filled with hundreds of patrons, including many, many families with small children, teenagers, and elderly patrons. The evidence and circumstances show that all three participants willfully engaged in the shootout, demonstrating a complete disregard for human life and the safety of others. At least 12 rounds were fired in the shootout, however, we believe it was more, Your Honor, which occurred in the main corridor of the mall near the Gap store. At no time do we see an actual physical altercation between the suspects. In fact, they remain, remain several feet apart at all times. Based on our review of video surveillance, there was never a fight or even a swinging of a fist. All parties drew guns to resolve their conflict. We see three persons willfully pull firearms and engage in this reckless shootout, even with patrons in front of them, beside them, and all around them. This hell of gunfire results in gunshot injuries to at least 10 victims, nine of them with gunshot wounds, and a 10th victim who was grazed by a flying bullet. The gunfight between Joanne Price and Marquise Robinson occurs with a kiosk physically between them. They were not engaged in physical altercation before we see this exchange of gunfire. As for Amari Smith, who is before the court at this time, and Joanne Price, they remained several feet apart enough so that an innocent bystander is located between them when they engage in their shootout. This bystander ducks for cover and hits the floor, otherwise would have likely been struck by gunfire. An employee of a nearby kiosk also drops to the floor and runs, or else he would have been in direct line of fire between Amari Smith and Joanne Price. This conduct, Your Honor, created extreme fear and chaos among the innocent. We see a father with two small children close by shield his children from gunfire, probably as close to Amari Smith as I am now, Your Honor. We see a teen run into danger to pull her mother to safety. It is during the shootout between Amari Smith and Joanne Price that we see the elderly victim, who is, who is 73 years of age, walking by and shot during the shootout between Amari Smith and Joanne Price. She is only feet away from them. Her injuries were life-threatening, Your Honor, and remain life-altering. She is still in the hospital. This shootout arose to an ongoing dispute dating back to 2018 between these three parties. It escalated into this reckless shootout among all three participants who appear on video surveillance to be equal and willful combatants and risking the lives of many, 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 many innocent bystanders. <coughs> As for Amari Smith, Your Honor, we do consider him a flight risk. He fled the mall that day, we believe, with Marquise Robinson, a co-defendant. He has been the subject of an intense manhunt now for four days, overseen by the U.S. Marshal Service. We understand that he turned himself in to authorities late yesterday. We are still missing the gun, Your Honor. Regarding the gun, we know from social media posts that Amari Smith was wearing the same hoodie and the same ski mask uh, at the mall that day that we see him wearing in a social media post where he is showing off a handgun with an extended magazine. Again, that gun is missing, but we believe that may be the gun he used inside the mall. I spoke, Your Honor, about the victims in this case. Um, as I stated, we have a 73-year-old victim uh, who has been hospitalized with critical injuries. Uh, there was one victim who <coughs> suffered a gunshot wound who was pregnant, Your Honor. Uh, we have multiple teenagers who were shot and uh, injured 
Among those, Your Honor, a 16-year-old who was at the mall that day shopping with friends. Her parents are here in this courtroom. Um, I have seen the photographs of her injury. She is shot in the back just uh, an inch or so from her spine. Also present in the courtroom, Your Honor, is um, a female gunshot wound victim and also a couple who were shopping together that day at the mall. All of them have asked um, that we relay on their behalf their position. They are all opposed to bond. Um, the couple who were shopping together, um, his wife tells me that she heard him call her name. Uh, she finds him with a gunshot wound to the thigh. Together they run and take cover with many, many other patrons at the mall that day. Your Honor, all three of the defendants in this case were in violation of Columbiana Mall policy, which prohibits them from entering that location with any type of concealed firearm. If released, there is nothing to prevent them from continuing to illegally carry weapons. This creates a risk of ongoing retaliation between your associates as well as themselves, and certainly, Your Honor, it is an ongoing risk to the community. Uh, as I stated, that firearm that Amari Smith possessed is still missing. Knowing that weapons can be easily acquired and unregulated, there's no way for the state to monitor or ensure that weapons won't be accessed. Therefore, pursuant to SC Code 17-15-10, the state maintains that release on bond would result in unreasonable danger to the community or to any other individual. Um, as I stated, Your Honor, um, each of the victims that we have spoken with today um, is in opposition to bond and did ask that we relay that to the court. Thank you very much. Ms. Dixon, I see you over there as well on behalf of the victims. Is there anybody that would like to address me today? No, Your Honor. Okay. And in terms of the Victims' Bill of Rights, were all of the victims notified about today's proceedings? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Smith, at this time, I need to decide what sort of bond is appropriate based on the charges that you've been charged with. I've heard from the state. I have some questions that I need to ask you. They're not related to the facts of this case, but they are related to, they have, they're related to some personal information about you. The two things that I'm trying to decide today as I set bond is, are you a flight risk and are you a danger to the community, okay? So these questions are gonna have to do with that, okay? Um, <coughs> Mr. Smith, how long have you lived in Columbia? My whole life, over 21 years. Okay. Where'd you go to high school? Little Richmond High School. Did you graduate from there? Yes, ma'am. What year did you graduate? 2019. Are you working? No, ma'am. When's the last time you had a job? Probably about a year or so. Where did you work? UPS. And how long did you work there? A couple months. Who do you live with? My mother. And have you lived with her your whole life? Yes, ma'am. All your family is in Richland County? Yes, ma'am. Well, some live like, in a different state, but on my mother's side. to look at your prior criminal history that's been provided to me. And I do not see anything on there. Would you agree with that? Yes, Mr. Smith, before I set your bond, I'll give you an opportunity to speak to me again. I do not want to hear about the facts of the case. That's not before me today. If there's anything that you want me to know in terms of setting the bond, I'll be glad to hear from you. Not required to say anything to me mm -hmm. if you want to remain silent. I just want to say that I'm not a flight risk, and uh, I was being going to turn myself in, but I had to get my lawyer and all that stuff straight first because there's not no love. Do you have no a lawyer today? Case. Uh, no, ma'am. I thought I was really supposed to have one. Okay. I got to call my mom and stuff, but I was supposed to, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I was waiting on to turn myself in. Okay. All right. Anything else? And I just want to. Uh, Apologize. Let's just stop right there, okay? Let's stop right there. In terms of the bond setting, Mr. Smith, I don't know if you had an opportunity to hear or read or see anything that happened at the prior bond settings, um, but it's important enough, I think, for me to say it again. What happened that day not only is terrible for the victims that are present today and the victims that aren't, 
but it is terrible for every resident of this community who lost a piece of their security based on what happened at that mall. And as I said at the last bond setting, it was a holiday weekend. I think the solicitor even brought that up. It was a holiday weekend. Um, most of our students were out on spring break. That mall was, everything that I've heard indicates that that mall was crowded and full. And based on the fact, anyone that enters the mall under those conditions with a weapon and uses it, I find to be an incredible danger to the community. Your case is slightly different in that you, um, it did take several days to find you. So in addition to being a danger to the community, based on what happened, I do also find you to be a flight risk. Both of those things make my decision um, one to deny bond on all of your charges. Okay, thank you very much. Marquise Watterson. Robinson, you're back before me um, on an additional warrant of the unlawful carry of a pistol. Do you understand that charge? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand that if you were to plead or be convicted of the charge, you would be facing up to a year um, in prison or a thousand dollar fine? Do you understand that? Does the state want to be heard on this charge? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, regarding this firearm, uh, there was a firearm recovered during the execution of a search warrant. Um, on the uh, date that Mr. Robinson was taken into custody. Uh, we believe and hope that that is uh, the firearm. That is a stolen firearm out of Kershaw County. Mr. Robinson, we've already talked a little bit about your history and I'm familiar with it. Um, and I've already talked to you about your right to remain silent. I think you understand that as well. Is there anything additional that you want me to know today before I set the bond on this? Based on the totality of the circumstances and what I've heard from the state today, I am going to deny bonds on this charge as well. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. 